Hi, my name is Andrew Baker and I'm a policy analyst here at the Centre for Independent Studies. My latest report, Tax Welfare Churn in the Australian Welfare State, was released this week. Australia's welfare state, which includes health, education, income support payments, accounts for around 65% government expenditure or around $360 billion annually. With the challenges stemming from an ageing population and the proliferation of expensive programs such as the $22 billion a year National Disability Insurance Scheme, welfare state spending will drive government growth well into the future. Reforms to Australia's welfare state are urgently needed and that is why we are focusing on welfare as part of our Target 30 campaign. Not all welfare state spending involves government acting like Robin Hood, taxing the rich to give to the poor. In many cases, the government, rather than taking from Peter to pay Paul, is taking from Peter to pay Peter, minus a hefty administration fee. The absurd process of taking with one hand and then returning it with another is known as tax welfare churn, and it accounts for approximately 50% of welfare state spending, or $150 billion every year. Any effort to rein in government spending, like our Target 30 campaign, must have at its heart a plan to reduce tax welfare churn. Sometimes churn occurs simultaneously. For example, taxes paid through wages are returned in family payments, for free school education and healthcare. Sometimes churn occurs over the course of a life. Taxes paid during working years are returned as pensions, health services and other benefits during retirement. In order to reduce churn, enhance in individual liberty, personal responsibility and free enterprise, we need to reduce welfare payments, welfare services and taxes all at the same time. One of the most effective ways of doing this is to target welfare payments for people who are not poor and do not need government support, or in other words, middle class welfare. A good place to start would be to look at government pensions. This year, the Commonwealth will spend around $51 billion on the aged pension and aged care. This is expected to increase to $61 billion by 2015-16. These two areas of spending must be reformed in order to be sustainable into the future. One way to do this is to raise and align the age pension and preservation ages, which is the age you can access your superannuation. Ideally, both of these eligibility thresholds would increase in line with life expectancy. Retirees should also be required to purchase an annuity with their superannuation savings so that more people use more of their own money for longer rather than relying on the pension and the lucrative concession card that comes with it. Further reforms could, be, could take into account the value of the family home in assessing eligibility for the pension and financial contributions for residential aged care. Immediate savings of $4.5 billion a year can be found by abolishing middle class welfare payments like Family Tax Benefit Part B, which can be paid to families earning up to $150,000 a year. The school kids bonus can go too for a saving of $1.2 billion every year. Introducing means testing for payments and subsidies that are not already means tested is another avenue to reduce tax welfare churn. Care allowance, childcare rebate, medical and pharmaceutical benefit schemes all fall into this category. More savings could be found by replacing existing welfare payments with income contingent loan schemes, for example, paid parental leave, unemployment benefits and youth allowance. This would make more people responsible for more of their own welfare. The, the disability support pension also needs to be reformed to make it easier for people with a partial capacity to work to move off welfare and into a job. Reassessing the current DSP cohort of more than 800,000 people on the tougher eligibility criteria introduced last year would be a good first step. Introducing activity tests and participation requirements for the DSP would also help improve the workforce participation of people with disability. These are just a few of the many ways to reduce government expenditure and tax welfare churn at the same time. While Australia has weathered the worst of the recent financial crises in Europe and the US, this does not mean we should be complacent. And that is why the CIS Target 30 campaign is so important, because it aims to reduce the size of government to a more sustainable level to help reduce the burden on future generations.